We welcome all of you. We welcome you to join us on live stream also. We enjoy your fellowship around the truth of God. Amen. This will be our 50th lesson in the book of Genesis. We're going to begin being in the 30th chapter tonight covering how some of the births occurred. As I mentioned to you before, this, this is the kind of text that from one point of view is a difficult to teach because just from the standpoint of a historical text, it's fairly easy to comprehend, but you got to look at the handwriting of the text. See, any, any, Scripture is inspired in in the spirit is a certain kind of handwriting that yes. characterizes it. And in scripture always says more than it's that it that it says. <laughs> you hear people say, well it means just what it says. Well it does mean just what it says, but it means a whole lot more too. Because the personality of God is in it mm -hmm. and the person of God is in it and the purpose of God is in it. We'll be going over verses 1 through 21 of chapter 30 tonight. <clears throat> and when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto her, and said unto Jacob, give me children or else I die. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead, who hath withheld from, withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid to wife, and Jacob went in to her. And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had left bearing, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I. For the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. And Reuben went into the, in, the, in the fields of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. And she said unto her, is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband, and wouldst thou take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him, and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my mandrakes, my son's mandrakes. And he lay with her that night. And God hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived and bare Jacob a f the fifth son. And Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I have given my maid to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And afterwards she bare a daughter. 
and called her name Dinah. Amen. <laughs> well, some people would find it rather difficult to preach a sermon or teach on that text, but we'll show you that there's a lot to be said here. We're dealing with, with a comparatively small amount of revelation that had been given to the people. These are times you always ought to keep that in your mind. These people didn't had not been told much. They hadn't been told anything about God's eternal purpose, not anything. They been told anything about what's going on in heaven or what happens in heaven or, or where you're going to heaven or nothing like that. They didn't know anything like that. You know all that. At least you should know all of it. <laughs> Yet man intuitively thinks with God in mind, with at least as much as he's been exposed to by default. They kind of they can kind of think that way. It's a particularly a particularly decadent generation when they don't think that way. When they think without God in mind, now you're at the bottom of the barrel. And that happens to be the kind of society we're living in. Amen. We're living in a society that's worse than the societies before Abraham. Because you see, they talk about God a lot and what God did and God heard. Me and see. Well, you think these are Christian people talking? No, these weren't. These people didn't know what you know. But you see, they all bring God into the picture all the time. Even you, you, uh, you will think by default you understand more than you recognize. And every once in a while it'll kind of surface. And sometimes you almost surprise yourself, you know, by things that you know. There were certain things people knew intuitively like Laban. Laban later, he's, he's going to say to Jacob, I've learned by experience that the Lord's blessed me because of thee. Listen, brethren, there are a lot of Christians that cannot come to that conclusion. Yeah, right. Professing Christians, they couldn't come to that conclusion. I've been blessed because brother and sister so and so is here. Yeah, they right. couldn't. They couldn't see it. Now, what I'm showing you see is that God made man so that even when there's not much revelation, people can still draw some yeah, kind of valid conclusions. And again, uh, years earlier, the Laban said to Abraham's servant, when the Abraham's servant told him he was there to get Isaac for a wife and so forth, he said, this thing proceedeth from the Lord. We cannot say bad or good. He, he was asking for their permission. He said, we, <laughs> this is from the God. We can't even venture an opinion on this. This is something God said. We can't. He. Well, see, there are people in our generation, they, they, don't, they can't reason like that. So this, this is how... Now, this is kind of crude, I understand, but this is how stupid they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can't even think like Laban, and he like yeah. wasn't the pinnacle yeah. of virtue. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Paul affirmed in ancient times to some heathen in Lystra. They were offering him, they were offering sacrifices to him because he had healed a lame man. They just start treating him like a god. He said, sirs, why do you do these things? We also are men of like passions with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities to the living God which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. That's key. That's a key yeah, phrase. Yeah, yeah. Do I know how to preach to people who don't know Christ? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's yeah, a way. Mm -hmm. You can tell them something like this. Say, listen, back before Jesus, people were doing bad things like you, mm -hmm. and God permitted it. Mm -hmm. He allowed it. Mm -hmm. But no more. Yeah. Amen. you got to quit living like this. That's, that's yeah, what amen. you say. 
This is what you say. So that might hurt their feelings. This is what you say. That's right. He suffered them to walk, he, walk in their own ways. Nevertheless, he left not himself without a witness. That is, even in that circumstance, there are little, little candles were, yes. were glowing. God allowed men to walk in their own ways. <laughs> what a statement is that? That's why then these people did these things mm -hmm. that look like they're wrong, see? The Hagars and Orleas and Abimelechs. And see, it looks like it's wrong, but because of the times mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and because of the limited revelation, he allowed men to walk in their own ways just to show you it is not in man that walks to direct his steps. But that was he demonstrated that. He showed that in history. Mm -hmm. Man can't direct his steps. Mm -hmm. If you think he can, here I'm going to take the very best people the people I've dealt with, the people I've called, I'm going to take the best people and I'm going to show you that even they can't direct their steps. Think of what sinful Lamech said way back in the beginning. He first met it. He had married two wives, remember, mm -hmm. Lamech, and killed, killed a couple of men. He said, if Cain should be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech, seventy and sevenfold, Lamech said that. Some years after Cain lived, oh, he, he knew that. Both Leah and Rachel reasoned when they had births mm -hmm. and when they couldn't have births that God had done both. Mm -hmm. God had stopped the room, God had opened the room. Yeah. Bo both of them reasoned this way. The mariners on the ship Jonah was on mm -hmm. reasoned during this fierce storm, prayed, baby, baby, God's been angry. Pray to your God, maybe he... I'm showing you here that when God, even when God allowed men to walk in their own ways, there's this surface, this God consciousness surface. Citizens of Nineveh, they hear this negative preacher. He just says 40 days. Yeah. He didn't preach repent. He didn't preach repentance. 40 days. Mm -hmm. That's all. This place is going to be burned up. And they thought upon it and they reasoned, maybe God will turn from His ways if we yeah. repent. Why did they see he allowed men to walk in their own ways, but he left not himself without witness? That's yeah, that's yeah. what I'm showing here. Mm -hmm. And when they Philistines stole the ark mm -hmm. of the covenant, and a few thousand of them died when they opened it up, they were able to associate their trouble with judgment. This came from God. We better send this thing back, and we better send like a sacrifice or offering of some kind. Mm -hmm. Why did they think that way? He allowed them to walk in their own ways, but he left not himself without witness. I'm telling you, when people don't think this way, we are living in a divinely abandoned yes, that's right. generation. Amen. Amen. That's what's happened. Yeah. I mean, the church doesn't even think like mm -hmm. this. The professed church doesn't even think like this. Yeah. Couple breaks out in the church, they try and solve it mm -hmm. with human wisdom. Before that they might have their feelings hurt, but technically, isn't that the, the point? Men, <laughs> men a, have to have their feelings hurt before any remedy is going to be that's ministered. right. Amen. That's right. Now, let's, uh, let's get into the text here. <coughs> Lee has been having children. Rachel saw that she bare that she bare no children to Jacob. You know, the text told us she was barren. We knew that right off the bat, but she didn't know this. <clears throat> but she learned by experience. I'm barren. They, she saw. Some years had passed, see? Right? Some years had passed. Lee had four sons. The four years, Rachel didn't have any. So Rachel, she realized, I'm barren. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she perceived that she bore no children, the Septuagint version says. She realized she realized she was barren. Britain says, having perceived she is barren, she saw, I, I can't produce anything. 
<laughs> Let me tell you, a lot of professing Christians, this is what they need to see. I can't produce anything. I can't do anything right. I can't please God. I'm spiritually barren. Well, she knew what to do about the case. Now, to some women, this wouldn't have been a serious matter. They said, thank God. They said, well, praise God, you know. But that's not the way Jewish women thought. When women had been called into the purpose of God, they began thinking, mm -hmm. particularly Jewish women, about this. Seed yeah. through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, this came down the pike. They knew what God had promised Abraham. Mm -hmm. You're going to have multiple seed. You're going to have great nations going to come from you. And then later on, I tell you the Messiah is going to come from that nation and all this. So they were, barrenness was viewed differently in that mm -hmm. context. Now, the extent of... Uh, Rachel's knowledge about Jacob's calling, we, we don't know. We don't know how much they talked with each other. We, we just, we don't know. I assume that they did, but the chummy view of marriage, I have an idea. It wasn't exactly like that back in those days. You were so busy working and everything. It, it was probably a little bit different than it would be now. They, let's get, before we go to bed, let's share everything with each other. I can see the sense of doing that and do that myself, but we don't know if they did that or not. Barrenness confirmed by experience. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a type to be seen here. The scripture, now, I, I know that I was about to say most Christian people, I hope it's not most, but I, I really frankly think it is, they don't know that the fruit of the Spirit is not a goal. Uh -huh, yeah. He didn't say the fruit of the Spirit should be. Uh -huh, that's right. that yeah. The fruit of the Spirit is. Amen. It's an is. Uh -huh. Is factor. There are Christian people, professed Christian people, they can't do good works. Even though the Bible says we're created unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, yet they can't, they can't do it. Mm -hmm. All right, they've got to be able to perceive that. There's, this is one of the reasons why the, what results when you come into Christ has to be preached. Yeah. It has to be declared. It has to be affirmed. This is what Christians do. Not this is what they ought to do. It's a difference. Yeah. It's a difference yeah. Yeah. in preaching what people should do yeah. and preaching what they do do. Yeah, that's right. They shall all know me. Yes, yeah. Brother Matthew. Yeah, that's that's uh, indicative of the manners of the two covenants. Uh, the first one, what you should do, that's what they said under the law. That this we will do, you know. Mm -hmm. Under the, the, the new covenant, we're talking about what God did. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. They'll all know me. Yeah. And I'll write my law in their hearts and put it in their minds. But people have to learn this. If the person who's been heard, believed, and been baptized into Christ, and after some time they still are unable to produce fruit, somebody's got to tell them what God expects. That if there's not fruit... Jesus said, if it's not fruit, my father yeah. prunes them, yeah. takes them off the vine. Right. Now, what's led to this spiritual impotence? Well, it's a number of things. We could think the most favorable is that perhaps they're a beginner, they're a novice. Or as Paul would say, children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. See, they're this, all right, all right, we can understand we're not looking for a reason to be harsh with people. We we understand when you're children, you got to grow up. Children in Christ, we're talking about. Yeah. You have to grow up. So we're, we're tolerant of that. Mm -hmm. But these children that are growing up have got to be able to see, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not bearing fruit. 
God tells you, be content with what things that you have, and I'm so discontent. It's like being spiritually barren. Then there's the, there's the, the quencher. This Holy Spirit's given to you when you come into Christ. <laughs> but they have made a practice of quenching the Spirit. Every time they get this, they think it's just like an idea or a thought they had, but it's the Holy Spirit has yeah, been right. yeah. throwing suggestions, you might say, into their minds. They say, I don't, want, I don't feel like it right now. I got a, something I'd rather do right now. And they quench the Spirit. But when you quench the spirit, you begin to get your impotence that sets in. Yeah, that's right. See, the secret to lacking spiritual impotence is the Holy Spirit. Who, he's the empowerer or enabler. Mm -hmm. So if you quench him, you become impotent. Mm -hmm. Amen. There's no way you'll be able to do what God tells you to do. And it could be the person as it quench the spirit, but they haven't been taught. They're tossed to and fro because they're, what they've been taught is deficient, and maybe they're not even born again. Because unless a person is born again, he can't see the kingdom and he can't enter the kingdom. So let's see, there's some legitimate reasons for barrenness. Mm -hmm. They're legitimate, but, they're, but under no condition can barrenness continue. Mm -hmm. yeah. We admit that there are conditions in which a person is spiritually impotent, and God will allow that for a season, and the season probably depended upon the person, their capability, and this sort of thing, I understand. But eventually, they got to come to, the, like Rachel, like, see, I, I see I'm, I see I'm having no children, I see I'm barren now. I, Jacob might have told her before, but no, no, I can do it, I can do it. I can do it, it's just that things haven't been, just not the right season or something, I can do it, I can do it, but pretty soon, she said, I can't do it. I'm barren. Well, it's important to see these uh, yes, amen. things. So Rachel, she, uh, she looks at her sister, her older sister. She looks at her sister. It's obvious she's not barren. She's got five sons already. Yes. So she's not barren. So she envies her sister. I mean, I'm the favorite wife, you know. I'm the preferred wife, but I'm not having any children. And she was imposed on Jacob, and she has children. I'm not, and she's envious of her. She saw her life as, as futile unless she bore children. Yeah, that's right. So, see, that, that's the way you know that this wasn't an American woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You got, see, you got to think about things like this. She, so she goes to Jacob. She didn't go to God. I'm not, not at this point. Eventually she did, but she goes to Jacob. She says, give me children or I die. I mean, there's no point to live if I'm childless. What's the, what's the sense of me being your wife and I can't bear any offspring? You're supposed to have multitude of seed and, and you got the promise of everything and here I'm not contributing. Give me children or I should, or I die. Now, I wanted to say a word about discontentment. Discontentment can be the prelude to proper or improper quests. You can either stop doing anything or start doing something. Discontent. Now, it's good to develop some real contentment. Let me tell you. If you're in Christ... Godliness with contentment Amen. is great gain. Amen. You want to get at the point where you can see with David, who wasn't, who was a lot lower down the totem pole of inspiration than you are, mm -hmm. but you want to be able to say, "The lot have fallen to me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage." You've got to be able to assess your life. You have to be, if you're in Christ, you have to be able to come to the point where you assess your life and say, you know, I've got a lot. I've been set in a very pleasant place. Until you, you'll be discontent. Do you see this? The psalmist admonished, now rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. <laughs> Hello. 
How quickly do you wear, wear out? Day, two days, week, two weeks, three weeks. Rest in the Lord, wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his way. You see everybody else, don't, don't be fretting about it. See, Rachel was fretting here. Don't be fretting about it. He also observed a little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked people. See, so, so. Contentment, contentment. Paul said, no, I have learned to be content. Rachel learned she was barren. That's right. Hmm? She found out. He said, I've learned to be content whatever state I'm in. Have you learned, have you learned that? If you haven't, you can. Mm -hmm. Amen. You can. Yes. This is just it was not just a Pauline experience. I've learned, I've learned. So you learn it, see. Yeah. Be content, whatever state I'm in. He said to Timothy, now godliness with contentment. Mm -hmm. Great gain. Boy, you get those two things together, godliness and contentment. Boy, there's a lot of stuff will start coming mm -hmm. from God to you. And then he continued telling Timothy, we brought nothing into the world. It's certain we can carry nothing out. And, and having food and raiment, have you got food and raiment? Well, yeah, I can tell. Yeah, you do. Let us therewith be content. Amen. Yes. Uh, Paul said, I have learned. I mean, he was taught. That's right. He was taught these things. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a, a disciple is a learner. Who's taught by the Amen. master teacher? See, in Christ Jesus, the state of contentment is available. Yes. You can't explain this to the flesh, you, you, yeah. even to your own flesh. You can't. You, you'll always get yeah, but yeah, but that that that, that Jewish strain of theology. Yeah, but yeah, but. But you got to get to the point where you, if you're discontent, you believe this is, <laughs> this BB and discontent is like an expect a mother that a woman wants children being infertile. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be in that position. Remember that boredom is the mother of all kinds of transgression. Mm -hmm. There's been a bunch of sin committed because people were bored. Mm -hmm. Oh, believe this. I'm telling you the truth. More than we dare to imagine. Now as we go through scripture, and we've, we've went over some of these cases already, there, was, there were certain responses to barrenness. The women responded. It's how, what you, how you respond to trouble is what defines what you are and what you have. How you respond to it. Sarah, she had uh, her personal response to barrenness is, isn't even recorded. So there's no response she had to barrenness. She, she didn't have, she, she wasn't, her womb wasn't open until she was 90 years old. I suppose you want to be exact, 80, a little over 89 years old. So through God's intervention, she conceived by strength and gave birth when she, she received strength and gave birth at 90 years of age. So, but her immediate response to barrenness isn't recorded. Rebecca, her personal response is not recorded either. She was barren too, but, but Jacob, uh, Isaac prayed for her and she conceived. Rachel, she did respond to her barrenness. We know that she did so in prayer also, in some way, because the 22nd verse says, God heard, hearkened, hearkened uh, yeah. under Rachel. Manoah's wife, she, as Samson's mother, her response isn't recorded either, to barrenness. So I'm so highlighting here that it's kind of unique that she responded to Hannah, she responded to her barrenness. She did respond, and she besought the Lord and said, "If you, if I can have a child, I'll give, I'll give him to you. I'll lend him to you, all the days of his life." <laughs> Elizabeth, she considered barrenness as a reproach. Hannah did too. It was a reproach. 
And her husband Zacharias and her both sought the Lord concerning their barrenness, and finally their prayers were, were heard when they were old. As a principle to be seen here, if it can be established, if you can see this, that spiritual productivity is normal. If you can, yeah. if you can see that, yeah. spiritual productivity is normal and that provisions have been made for productivity to take place, there should be a great discontentment with being spiritually impotent. Amen. You should look at your brethren and envy them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I envy them. But look at all the things they're bringing forth. Yeah. Uh -huh. Here come another Lord's Day, and I couldn't think of anything to praise God for. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's kind of the lower end of things. <coughs> to me, one of the devastating effects of the spiritual Babylon is that it's made people content to be spiritually barren. People don't think anything about it. They're spiritually barren. They can't produce anything for God. God doesn't get any real glory out of their lives, but it doesn't bother them. Why not? This is the, this is the effect of Babylon the Great. So as a result, the thought of bearing fruit to God, which is stated in Romans 7, 4, this is why we're joined to Christ, is that we might bring forth fruit unto God. So that's stated. And he reasons on this, Eve. He reasons on it. Peter says he, he lists a, a series of virtues that come from God. He says, if you do these things, you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. You shall not be barren. Add to your faith virtue, virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, godliness, godliness, brotherly, and so forth. You will not be barren. Well, that means there is such a thing as being spiritually Barren, just like Rachel was barren. And again, he reasoned with the Hebrews. The earth was drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meat for them, by whom it is dressed. Receives blessings from God, but that which beareth thorns and thistles is rejected, and is nigh unto cursing whose end is to be burned. So here's this field. Receives all this nourishment, all this care. And it just becomes a briar patch. That's yeah. uh -huh. <laughs> dangerous. Yes, Brother Judah. All of us, before, before being in Christ, were in a state of barrenness. We yes. We're in bondage to Satan. Every single one of us were in a state of being barren. Mm -hmm. When we came into Christ, the ability to bear fruit was given, mm -hmm. and that abundantly is what we bear mm -hmm. fruit with. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Well, Yes. I, I think in our day, whenever most people, when they think about God, they think about God doing something for them. They never really think about them doing. And if there is any thought about service, they think of maybe serving the lost or serving the fellow, you know, humans. But there, there isn't this real sense that our lives, or the purpose of our lives, is to serve God. That we're made, we're made priests in Christ Jesus. The the priests. Uh, primary uh, ministry was to God. It was on the behalf of the people, but they, their primary primary thing they were doing was ministering to the Lord. Yes, Amen. Yeah, the thing that um that she could do. I mean, she couldn't do anything about being barren, but she could be discontent with it. That's right. Be discontent with it. <laughs> That's the beginning. Amen. See, yeah. discontentment is the beginning mm -hmm. of either a bad thing or a good mm -hmm. thing. But yeah. it, you can't be neutral if you're discontent. The result will not be neutral. Yeah. They call us both of these women to seek the solution. That's right. Mm -hmm. they were Amen. Yeah. Now God said of Israel, He planted it, He likened it to planting a good seed. It's an excellent seed. Excellent place, cleared it out. And then He asked them after He, he went to the field, He said, uh, I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. Then, why, how then art thou turned into a degenerate plant and a strange vine unto me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is saying that mm -hmm. to the modern church. That's right, amen. Now the church is deaf and obtuse and it doesn't hear it. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is still speaking to his churches. Mm -hmm. I planted you a noble vine. 
You become a degenerate plant unto me, and the same stuff that's in the world is in you. Amen. But see, they're, they're deaf. They can't hear it. And the preachers and teachers aren't saying it because it would take away their salary, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know how important we all have to make a living. You know? yeah. But you, you don't have to make it preaching. Mm -hmm. We've got quite clear about this. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Amen. The church has got to be told this. Yeah. Well, Jacob, how are you going to react to this? Give me children or I die. Well, Jacob got angry. Yeah. <laughs> it was an unreasonable request. Mm -hmm. yeah. He couldn't really do anything about himself. Now, this wasn't a beastly and uncontrollable anger where he may beat his wife up. It wasn't that kind of anger. It was a grieve or vexed anger. Now you'll find that unreasonableness, unreasonableness does have an impact on you. Oh, yeah. I was uh, in the process of answering some questions today when Ada was up and I was irritated because of some of these questions. I, didn't, I wasn't irritated at the people. I felt sorry for the people, but at the boy. I don't, I don't like to have to deal with stuff like this. I got some other things I'd like to tell, but you have to deal with this. Uh -huh. when, so, when there's uh, irritating things, the unreasonableness irritates the person of God. Uh -huh. yeah. It does. You see, you see unreasonable conduct in someone you know, and it'll irritate you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you don't want to walk around being a grouch all the time, but you, under, you understand what I'm saying here, that it is an unsettling... Uh, effect upon a person. <coughs> Jacob's anger was kindled. I would just make to have some passing thoughts on anger. Because some people think anger is a sin, just anger itself is a sin. The anger of the Lord. There's 32 references in the Bible to the anger of the Lord. But you don't want to be involved in, in any of them. One place it says that Psalm 7, 11, God's angry with the wicked every day. So I used to go with pe work with people. They say, well, I'm going to say, well, have a good day. So what's the good about it? I said, well, God is angry with you all day long. Yeah. You didn't go to hell today. So you yeah. ought to really be glad. Because if you'd have died, you'd have went to hell. Yeah. Boy, I tell them that. <laughs> they got used to it. Pretty soon they said, don't ask. Yeah. Don't tell Blakely about what's so good about it, because they knew what I'd say. Yes. It's the truth. Uh -huh. yes. There are people you can say this to. Mm -hmm. Say, you got a lot to be thankful for today. I'll just thank God for you, because God's angry with the wicked every day, and if you'd have died today, you'd have been on in hell down there with that rich man. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's where you'd be. Mm -hmm. God's angry, see, mm -hmm. with the wicked every day. <laughs> Jesus once looked on a crowd in the synagogue. Mm -hmm. He looked on them with anger. Remember that man, the withered hand was there. Here, right in the middle, right in the middle of the congregation, here sits a man with a withered hand, and nobody thinks squat about it. Yeah, nobody thinks squat. That means they didn't think anything about it. Yeah. No one thought anything about it. It's just meant he had mercy on this man, and the people got upset with him because he had yeah. mercy, and he looked right about him with anger. Mm -hmm. I've often wondered, wonder how that looked. It wasn't a smiley look, let me tell you. That's right. I'm showing you the anger. It does surface. Believers are admonished. Now be angry. Be angry. But don't sin. Don't, don't, don't let it explode. There's a certain kind of anger you've got to put off. That's this violent anger and unreasonable anger. Just like stop it. Put off anger means stop being angry like that. So I, I have a hard time stopping that. Well, do it anyway. How hard do you think it is for a lame man to pick up his bed and walk? How hard is that? Mm -hmm. He said, when, he, so when you, you have uh, uncontrollable anger mm -hmm. and you uh, hurt people and harm people some way by it, just stop doing it. Yeah. Just pick up your bed and walk. Yeah. Just do it. And when you extend yourself to do it, then God gives you the strength to do it. <laughs> An elder or a bishop, he's not to be soon angry. Oh, I don't know. He doesn't like blow and shoot off his temper after a short time. If he does, he can't be an elder. 
Boy, that would disqualify a lot of people. So Jacob's anger was kindled. He said, am I in God's stead? See, he knew where birth come from. He knew where fertility came from. From God. This is one of those occasions where something ex was expected of men that could only be done by God. Uh -huh. yeah. See, there are people, they go to Rick Warren. Oh, yeah. You've heard of Rick Warren? Oh, yeah. And Olstein. You've heard of Joel Olstein? You've heard of these people? There's people that go to them mm -hmm. to get things that only God gives. Amen. Amen. And these people have convinced them they can give them. Yeah. Yeah. They can give them. They, we got to see special routines. Uh -huh. And one of them said, when I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror and I say, I like what I see. Right. I know it sounds foolish, doesn't it? Millions of people, they're doing it. They get up in the morning and they, go, they actually do that. Uh -huh, yeah. See, the people are spiritually barren. Uh -huh. They really are. Am I in the place of God? I'm not even going to venture out on this. This is something only God can do. Now, Jacob saw, no doubt, saw some things in uh, Rachel's hasty statement that chafed against, kind of irritated him. Rachel had not responded to her barrenness in a commendable manner. This was not like a, a good response. And she was jealous of her own sister, her own sister, whose womb the Lord had opened. Yeah. Remember that? The Lord opened. <laughs> they were both barren at the first, but it opened. And she blurted out an expectation that was impossible to the flesh. See, there's, there's no way to dignify the flesh. There's no, you can't really give the flesh a lot of credit because there's some things it just can't do and you, you really shouldn't expect it to be done in the flesh. You should expect that some things only God can do. Right. It's only if God has mercy and bestows the ability can it be done. Yes. That will resolve a lot of issues about what do I do if. You know, that will resolve a lot of issues if you just see that. <clears throat> Then he knew. He knew why Rachel couldn't have children. He didn't say, the devil's done this. God doesn't do anything bad. The devil does stuff bad. The devil must have done this. He said, God, who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the wombs? He knew. Life can't come from God if death doesn't also. Jacob knew this. He didn't have a Bible. He didn't have a Bible. He didn't have a Cruden's Concordance. He didn't have a PC search program. Didn't have a library. That he could check what some of the church fathers had said. But he knew this. God's withheld it from you. Well, Sarah said the same thing. Genesis 16, 2. Behold, now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. The Lord. Yes. Lord did that. Jacob said of Rachel's barrenness, Am I in the stead of God who hath withheld thee from bearing? Mm. It's written of Hannah that her adversary provoked her sore for to make her fret because God, because the Lord had shut up her womb. As a judgment against the house of Abimelech when he was one in Sarah, God closed fast all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah. So uh, everybody in his house, his wives, his servants, nobody could have children. So in his sovereignty, God, according to his will, both opens and closes the womb. <clears throat> So the fact that this was known early in human history, before Revelation, makes it inexcusable that it's not known now. Amen. See, the fruit of the womb is his reward, Psalm 127. So, Rebecca, yes, go ahead. I was going to say, so um, 
this discontentment that she had, the reason it was wrong was because she envied her sister. That's right. And, her, and what her sister had was what God had given her sister. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so we shouldn't envy what God gives someone, mm -hmm. but her discontentment should have caused her to, to uh, ask God <coughs> for it herself. That's you right. Know? So yeah. she envied something she should envy to get those things, That's not right. envy her sister and what God had given her. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You can see, if you can see it, that there's all kind of tests God sends our way to reveal to us what our nature is. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the way to live, actually. The way, uh, Sarah, the way, the way our brother lived in the past, Han and them, that this is the way to live, to know this came from the hand of God. That's right. See, so you know you know where it came from, now you can, you can now you know where to go. Amen. That's what I'm saying, to address it. Amen. Well, they could go to a fertility aspect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, nowadays you just, you know, if, if you have this kind of a problem, man has has to actually believe that they have a handle on it. Oh, I know it. I know it. Now I do want to always keep before you the times that we're dealing with here. Mm -hmm. There was during a time when very little revelation had been given, very little insight to God. Very few things had been developed, a very abbreviated revelation. For instance, it was revealed that the cedar woman would bruise the head of the serpent, but how he'd do it, when he'd do it, where he'd do it, you know, and what would come from it, with <laughs> no detail. That's all they knew. Mm -hmm. That is all they knew. The seed of the woman will bruise the head of the serpent. Yeah. What's that mean? We don't know what that means. That's what they would have to say. We have no idea what this means. Sounds like it's going to handicap the serpent, but the serpent's going to bruise his heels. That didn't sound good. Yeah. See, but that, but that's all they had. And to uh, through Abraham's seed, all families of the earth would be blessed. Well, what, what did that mean? Well, if you belong to the uh, renewal movement, they call it today. That's charismatic movement. You'd say, well, that means everybody's going to get rich. <laughs> And have a lot of possessions. That's going to be a redistribution of the wealth. That's what it's. That's what it's going to be. Well, that wasn't that wasn't what it's going to be at all. Because the blessing you get in Jesus transports over to the world to come. So it can't be that. And those are about the only two things they know about what God was going to do. That was about the only two things they knew. Seed of the woman's going to bruise the seed of the serpent, head of the, ser head, head of the serpent, the, and the serpent will bruise his heel, mm -hmm. and all families of the earth will be blessed. And when it comes to messianic information, that was like it. Yeah. That was it, brethren. So you, it's a marvel these people thought as clearly as they did. Yeah. Uh -huh. It tells you how much is in a word from God. Yeah. Tells you how much is in a word from God. You could just have those two words, mm -hmm. and you could you could conclude a lot of things from that. Yeah. See, like they did. This is from God. This isn't from God. So forth. How would you react if that's all you knew? These two things is all you knew. Mm -hmm. How would you react to the circumstances you've been asked to pass through? Yeah. Well, probably about about like they did. Yeah. You should be able to see that the, the, the degenerative effects of a great falling away, what has happened, it has hid this from the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The people are actually more obtuse mm -hmm. and insensitive to the things of God than the people that lived before the law of Moses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Babylon's done. Yeah, so if someone says, you sound like you don't like Babylon, you got it. Rebe uh, Rachel goes to thinking, well, <clears throat> I got a handmaid. I'm not, I'm not shut up here. I got a handmaid. Mm -hmm. He said, uh, so she said to uh, Jacob, behold, my maid Bilhah, go in unto her. She shall bear upon my knees that I may also have children to her. So that's, that's how I'll find, I'll find a way, I'll find a way uh -huh. yeah. to have some fruit. Now, Rebecca, she didn't follow that path to her credit. Mm -hmm. 
remember Isaac prayed for her, and she didn't go apparently that path at all, but Rachel does. But now there's something to be learned here. Now we're learning about vicarious children. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we got to yeah, see yeah. this. Children by someone other yeah. and the person himself. Mm -hmm. Vicarious children. Jesus is going to say in that day, Behold, I am the children mm -hmm. which thou hast given me. And they see they're called children of God, mm -hmm. but they came through Jesus. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like Jacob's offspring came through Bilhah. Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Or Rachel's children came through Bilhah. See? Vicarious children. So God can do this. He can bring children through another, mm -hmm. another means. That's why we're sons of God. Not because there was a direct interface between us and God. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a substitute in between. Mm -hmm. And it was Christ. And he had the consent to become a slave to do it, too, incidentally. Yeah, that's right. He'd be clothed. He was clothed with servanthood mm -hmm. to do it. So he could beget children for God. <clears throat> so she gave Bill her handmaid. And I gave, Sarah gave Abraham her man, handmaid. I would imagine that, that would there be some difficulty associated with that, you know. But she did, and Bilhah, lo and behold, she conceived, bare a son. Today, Bilhah would be called a surrogate mother. That's what they call him today. Well, let's be clear about one thing, that this is not acceptable today. Yeah, that's right. <coughs> it, it doesn't imply that there was any, any lust involved. In oh, no. Either. Well, this was a that took her as his wife. Yeah, this, yeah, that's something important that throughout all these incidences that it was lust wasn't what drove yeah. the thing. Uh -huh. It was it, Jacob having seed that drove the, yes, drove the matter. So she gave, uh, gave seed, it would be a, said she'll uh, bring forth on my knees. So uh -huh. what did that mean? Well, there's some appeals that, that uh, Bilhah would have resided on Rachel's knees while she gave birth, and yeah, well, but I think what it really means is that he was the child would be raised on Rachel's knees. Mm -hmm. Scriptures call it dawdled on their knees, yeah, yeah. that she would be raised on the knees of Rachel. Bill, see the, you got to see what this was for Bill too. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, also, a parallel here too is. Bilhah knew that this child was going to be for, That's right. for them. Just mm -hmm. like Christ, the children That's of right. God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> See, when you're in the will of God, there's satisfaction all, yeah. all through it. Now, responses, how you respond is important. I don't think that this has been adequately emphasized in the church world. and Perhaps I haven't emphasized it properly myself. But how you respond to what God does is, is critical. The Israel, now remember, we're raising a nation here. Yeah, that's right. <clears throat> a nation to whom God's going to invest everything he's got, he's going to invest in this nation. Every promise, every prophet the law, it's all going to be invested in this. Yeah, <laughs> so he's particular how it's, uh -huh. how it's produced. So here's how Rachel responds. God has judged me. In other words, would say, he's judged my case. Like I presented this case. I want to have children. God judged my case. God vindicated me, one version says. God's been my judge. The expression has been interpreted in a variety of ways by different commentators. Some say God chastened Rachel. I don't know how this would be constituted chastening, but that's what they say anyway. Others say, well, it secured justice for Rachel, considering her fertility to be an injustice when compared to Leah's productivity. Another group of commentators believe that this vindicated Rachel from the rep reproach of barrenness. 
One said that he had dealt with me according to his sovereign justice, withholding from me the fruit of the womb while I was forgetful of my dependence upon him and granted me posterity when I approached him in humble supplication. So that's the elaborate explanation one had. One says well, she was speaking in hypocrisy when she said this. But I see this expression as meaning that God vindicated the choice of Rachel to give her handmaid. Otherwise, Bilhah wouldn't have had the child. Yeah. Uh -huh. But she did, which means this. Mm -hmm. Remember now, God is allowing all men to walk in their own ways. You don't want to for, for, forget that little bit of knowledge. And so she, she did what well, this was acceptable. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not because it was the best thing to do, mm -hmm. because there weren't that many alternatives on what to, mm -hmm. what to do. But while the circumstances were less than ideal, the absence of a condemning word by the Holy Spirit uh -huh. suggests that Rachel's assessment was a correct yeah. under these under these circumstances. Yeah. It was Amen. it was correct. See, his ways are past finding out. Yeah. You'd have never figured that God would have done things this way, uh -huh. but that's how I did. She said, "God's heard my voice." Yeah, that's right. So that so that means she. Amen. Go ahead. And, I, and, I, and that's probably why you're right. That's why you said it is because. She knew that God's the one that opens the womb. That's right. She knew that God was the one that allowed her handmaid to have yeah. the child. So the very fact that she had it was a, was an evidence enough for her that God approved. Amen. Yeah. Brother Given, I, you know, we talked about this before in each incident has been to, so far up to this time. But I still think these godly women, most of them we've talked about, were uh, responding in faith. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they did. Really, yes, they know, did. The, you know, their faith is what led them to this. Uh, yeah. It was her it's, idea. It wasn't Jacob's idea. That's in right. all these instances. Yeah. Uh -huh. None right. none of them took credit themselves. Uh -huh. They all gave it to God. God had heard my voice. Yeah. Now, unless she's lying in that statement, and I don't think she is, she did present the plea to God. Now, whether she did it after Jacob said, you know, am I in the stead of God? I don't know when she did it, but at some point she had brought this thing to the Lord. Yes, amen. Like she saw she was barren, now she, she had perceived who to go to. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Then she just comes right out and says that God hath given me a son mm -hmm. <laughs> to another woman. Yeah. Amen. Gave me a son. Just as God gave Sarah a son to Hagar. And Leah's sons through Zilpah. Mm -hmm. Sarah's case differed because she had a particular son that was going to be born. Mm -hmm. So the son through the handmaid was rejected, but her case was unique, see. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> she called his name Dan, which means judgment. Now, at the end of this, I give a little table what they named the children. But the children became a kind of a living landmark to the epochs, that they would name the children in accord with what took place when they were born. And then every time they saw the child or anything like that, they'd remember this, Amen. this epoch. That was a Jewish, a Jewish manner. Call his name Dan, which means judgment. <clears throat> now Leah... See, I think... It was not like a casual type thing to, because Leah was vying for Jacob's love, remember? Yeah, that's right, yeah. So she wouldn't do anything to make him turn his attention to somebody else. She's thinking of these children, these seed. Wasn't to provide for the lust of the flesh at all, even though some people have represented it that way. <clears throat> So Leah, she, she left off bearing. She gives Zilpah. Zilpah conceives, brings forth a son. Now you took, God's forming Israel. In all this, God is forming Israel. Now I wanted to just pause for a moment to see how God said that he formed, I say he formed Israel. This is found in Isaiah 44, 21. 40, 43 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that's just a nation, 
And he that formed, oh, this is the formations, what we're reading about right here. And in the 42nd, 4th chapter, verse 21, And again, remember these, O Jacob and Israel, thou art my servant, I have formed mm -hmm. yeah. thee. See? <laughs> but see, who would have figured that God would have formed it this way? See, his ways are past finding out. Yeah, see, that right. you, you... Amen. Now, what are you going to do now, Leo? What's what going to be your response? Leah said, a troop cometh, and she called his name Gad. I want to read to you what some of the other versions say, just so you, you can feel the irritation I felt, you know. Some other versions say, how fortunate. It's a new American standard. What good fortune, that's the NIV. It's gone well for me, that's basic Bible English. The Holman Bible says, what good luck. Well, that's how it reads. Darby says, fortunately. Douay says, happily. English Standard Version says, good fortunes come to me. Geneva Bible says, a company cometh. That's like troop. God's Word Bible says, I've been lucky. Living Bible says, my luck has turned. <laughs> Victory and good fortune have come. That's the Amplified Bible. Now, there are some people who have pondered this whole text. What does this mean? Because it's just not that clear from just from a purely language viewpoint. But this comment was made in the pulpit commentary who had researched all this. said the authorized version, that's the King James, authorized version rendering is supported by the Samaritan this original text, and supposed to accord better with Genesis 49.19. That's approved by the man I mentioned there. So men have thought through this, that this was not just an experience of good fortune or experience of luck. Mm -hmm. A troop coming, that's, the, that's what they stumble on. What, what, what is that troop coming? Well, this parallels the prophecy that Jacob gave about Gad when he was dying, when he had all the boys come before him and he prophesied over him. And this is found in Genesis 49, 19. Gad will be attacked by a band of raiders, but he will attack them at their heels. The King James Version says, Gad, a troop shall overcome him, but he shall overcome at last. And this word that she gave hearkens to what was going to be said years later by Jacob. That Gad was going to be a, a powerful, like an army troop, yeah. is the idea. She named him accordingly, a troop. This, is, this isn't the end of this boy. Yeah. When she saw, see, this, she saw this is, this is going to blossom out into something significant. <clears throat> then um, Bilhah, Rachel's maid, she conceives again and bear Jacob a second son. So we got <coughs> Leah has four sons to date. This is Bilhah's second, and, and Zilpah had one so far. This is nation building. This is God forming, yeah. forming the nation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when this uh, Bilhah's, boy, that's Rachel's handmaid. When Bilhah's handmaid bears, Rachel responds, I have great wrestling, with great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister and I have prevailed. Like a, it was like a contest. Yeah, I thought I couldn't have children. That oh, now I've got I got one now. Here's a second one. I got a second one now. Mm -hmm. I've overcome my barrenness. See, I've over I've thought of way out of this barrenness. I've got I've got some children. And I remember at this time Leah was unable to bear. Where Leah ceased bearing, right? So that's the last word we had the previous chapter. She ceased bearing. So this is why Rachel says, I've triumphed. She's, she's quit bearing. I found this way to have children anyway. I'm prevailing. And she names the child Naphtali, <coughs> which means my wrestling. See how they name the children in accordance with the... Wrestling means I had to think this thing out. And I just, I did, this is not just like an ad hoc response that took place. I had to think this thing out and 
figure out how to do this, and it was like wrestling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there, there are decisions that are like wrestling. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Maybe you've experienced this already. <coughs> now, having bear a child through her handmade bill, how Rachel considers she's won the contest, at least at the present time, because Leah can't bear... And I thought of this thing of wrestling with, uh, with God. A little later, Jacob's going to wrestle with an angel from God. Abraham wrestled with, uh, with the Lord, with the angel, when he said, Will thou destroy the righteous with the unrighteous, with the wicked? But he's wrestling, wrestling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who knows what mighty works could be revealed if God's people learned to wrestle? I mean, if Rachel could wrestle with what little information she had, we should be able to wrestle, Amen. overthrow some principalities and powers, and subdue some of the enemy, and get something done that needs to be done, even if it's up, not by a conventional method. <laughs> Wrestling with God, it's, uh, it's something to, uh, to think about. Remember, the Lord said in the parable, he said, a man... Uh, came to his neighbor, he says, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine on his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And the friend said, oh, I'm, in, I'm in bed with my children. And, uh, but he wouldn't go away. Mm -hmm. He wrestled. He wrestled. So he wrestled. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't go away. He said, so finally the man said, Jesus said, Though he will not rise and give him because he's his friend, mm -hmm. <laughs> He won't do it just because he's close to the man. Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Well, God is still that way. Sometimes he doesn't give it to you because he likes you. Or because you're close to him because you just wouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. Something to think about, isn't it? Yeah. Amen. Then that's followed up. He follows up that word with this one. And I say unto you, so this is what you learn now. Uh, uh. Ask and shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth. In this case, it's asking a lot of times. I know some people say, don't say the same prayer twice, because that's like unbelief. Huh? You've heard this? That's a sign of unbelief. Well, that's not what Jesus said. He said it was a sign of belief. I understand he can't be done mechanically. Then when he told a similar parable but an importunate widow, an importunate man, he just kept on asking. He said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. That meant in a particular quest. Uh -huh. He didn't mean you better be praying every day. That's not what, that's not what he was saying. He said, when you, when you have something important enough to take before God, uh -huh. you don't let it go easily. Yes. You just say like a Jacob did, I'm not going to let you go until you that's bless right. me. And God honors that uh -huh. kind of faith. Amen. He'll do it because of that kind of faith uh -huh. where there may not be another good reason to do it. Uh -huh. Amen. <coughs> Paul didn't stop until they got an answer. That's right. <laughs> now Leah, I don't notice this to and fro movement, see. Leah, she saw that she had left bearing. Oh, I can't have children. She's, that's the same thing Rachel saw, the same thing. So she gave Zilpah her maid to her. I think I got a little ahead of myself on this. And she bare her children. And then Zilpah mm -hmm. bore another son. Uh -huh. That's Leah's handmaid. Bore a second son, like Bilhah bore two sons. Now Leah bears another son. Now I draw attention to the fact that this was building a nation now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Building a nation. He's building this nation so in the end no single person will be able to say, yes. I did this. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that good? Yeah. 
So no no man can glory in his presence. It's not of works. That's just that's just how how it's done. <coughs> now Leah, she says, "Happy am I. <laughs> Happy am I." You know, there's a lot of, there's a word, that's the first use of the word happy in the Bible. That's the first time happy is used in the Bible. Genesis, the 30th chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of uh, happiness <laughs> up until then. Now, you remember Paul said, happy is the man, happy is the man that condemneth not himself in the thing he does. That is, his conscience doesn't bother him, saying, I don't think I did the right thing. Happy is the man that his conscience doesn't plague him because of what he did. Happy is that man. James said, we count them happy that endure. He passed through the test. He, Rachel passed through the test. Leah passed through the test. And they both happy when they did. Got through happiest man to endure. If we suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. If people are hard on you because, you're, because of your faith, happy. Boy, you're happy because of that. If you suffer for righteousness sake, Peter said, happy are ye. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. See, that's, that's a scriptural sense of happy. So it's, happy is not like jokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not what it is. Mm -hmm. That's right. She said, the daughters are going to call me blessed. Mm -hmm. Who's these other daughters? These are the women who... Could be women located around her or women in the future. But the women were the women from God's point of view. They're, they're going to count me blessed. That's a similar set of Mary, you remember? Yeah. Call me blessed. Yeah. She called his name Asher, which means happiness. See, there, there's that name and a name and again according to what happened. Now then, as the time progresses, Reuben is grown. He's a young man, grown up now. Reuben in, went out in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. That's the text we're going to look at now. Not exactly an easy text, but I think you'll get something out of this. Now God's revealing to us his ways are not man's ways. He works, he works with what you got. He'll say to Moses, well, let's see, uh, what's in your hand? I got the run. We'll use that. Now, there's a, cert there's a certain level and certain circumstances in which God will say things like this. What have you got that I can work with? It, under certain circumstances, it may not make sense. But see, this is, this is one of those times. What, what have you got? Well... I got these mandrakes I got in the field. Mandrake was a plant, and it was thought to have uh, properties that made, that excited people and made them passionate and this sort of thing. That's the kind of plant we're talking about now. See, God, uh, and me accent this, that God does things that are, quote, unsearchable and marvelous things, Job 5.9, mm -hmm. that God would work with mandrakes. I mean, this is, mm -hmm. we would say that he worked with some perfume, you know. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That'd be the modern way of mm -hmm. looking at it. God does wondrous things past finding out, Job 9.10 says. Touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. We just, <laughs> we can't predict what he's going to do. The only way you can predict what he's going to do is what he, what he told he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Thy righteousness is like the great mountains. Thy judgments are a great deep. Well, oh, I just, I mean, mandrakes, mm -hmm. perfuming flowers, mm -hmm. like drugs. You know, they'd they be like a drug. Mm -hmm. No man can find out the work that God maketh from beginning to end, as Solomon, how wise, or well, the depths of, his ways of past finding out. Yeah. Who's known the mind of the Lord? See, that's what we're, we're reading an instant that you just would never figure mm -hmm. that this would happen. See, the notion of God fulfilling his will by placing together something that originated with men mm 
But what he's doing is totally absurd, but here, <laughs> here it happens. It happens here. He puts, now the answer is he puts into the hearts of men what to do. God, God, put, God can dictate what you think. Now there's a there's a notable example of it in in scripture. In Revelation seventeen seventeen, this is an adverse situation, but the beast was rising, taking over the world, you know, the Babel it was it turned out to be Babylon. And God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom to the beast. God put it in their hearts. These are hard these were hard hearts now. These are hard hearts. And God put into the religious people to give their give themselves to the to Babylon the Great. We'll, we'll buy into what she's doing. That's what they did. God put it in their hearts. And there's other instances of this God putting it in their hearts. See, what I'm saying is that God put this in their heart. That's the point I'm getting at. Exodus 31 says, Behold, I've given him a holy bed, the son of a, a Hissamach, and the tribe of Dan. And in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted, I have put wisdom. That's for the speaking of the tabernacle. Again, Ezra 7, 27. Blessed be the Lord God of our fathers, which hath put such a thing as this in the king's heart. Mm -hmm. Build the house of God. Yeah. A Persian king. Uh -huh. Build the house of God. See, Can you see, brethren, if the church could ever get a hold of this, yeah. they could govern the world yeah. from the assembly. If they could ever see this, they could govern the world from the assembly. Just amazed to be seen. Nehemiah 2, 12, I rose in the night, I and some few men with me, neither told I any man that my God had put in my heart, what had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. He, to build the wall. He didn't tell anyone, but God put him in his heart, put that in his heart to build the walls. Psalm 105, he turned their heart to hate his people. Yeah. That's, why, that's why Egypt persecuted his people. God turned their heart. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about the Egyptian captivity. Uh -huh. God turned their heart to hate his people so he could bring them out and demonstrate his great glory. Yeah. That's, that's how God works. Sometimes he uses mandrakes, as we'll see. I make an everlasting covenant with you that I will not turn away from you to do them good, but I will put my fear in their hearts that they shall not depart from me. Yes. So you find someone, they're holding on their way. Uh -huh. Well, from their viewpoint, they've been fighting a good fight of faith, keeping the faith. Uh -huh. For the heavy viewpoint, he put it in their heart not Amen. to depart. Amen. Right, <clears throat> I'm laboring this point because there are so many erroneous views of God himself. Mm -hmm. Some think of a kind God that wouldn't do anything to hurt anybody and this sort of thing. That's a false God. Yeah. It's not even the real God. Now, if, if eternal life, think this out with me, if eternal life is to know the only true God, if that's what constitutes eternal life, to know the only true God, and if the true God is the one concerning which Jesus gives us a proper understanding, he gives, to give us an understanding that we might know him that is true, then it can be neither right nor safe to have an erroneous view about God. Amen. That's right. Is that right? Uh -huh. With this in mind, now let's, let's proceed with this text. Reuben finds some mandrakes. He went out in the fields, wheat harvest, found mandrakes, there were these plants. He gave them, brought them to his mother, Leah. And Rachel saw this, and Leah, Rachel says to Leah, now Rachel doesn't know that Leah's going to, God's going to open her womb. At this point, her womb's mm -hmm. closed. I pray thee, give me, I pray thee, of thy son's mandrakes. Ah, let me have... Some of these. This will, this will help me maybe when I'm with Jacob. This will help me. She said, Leah said, Is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband? Would thou take my son's mandrakes also? What? What's going on here? Maybe Leah was using the mandrakes for the mm -hmm. same, <laughs> same purpose. 
Now, the objective Rachel has for, is for herself. She's not thinking about Leah, but she's going to make Leah think she's doing this for her. She says, I'll tell you what, Leah. If you will give me these mandrakes, then I'll give you the right to spend the night with Jacob. How's that for a good deal? I mean, he's been... Uh, He's been spending the night with me, you know. You know, he, as, you, as you know, Leah, he's been spending the night with me. And I tell you what, I'll let him spend the night with you if you'll let me have these mandrakes. Now, God's working in all this, see? Yeah. <clears throat> so she's willing to sell Leah the privilege of spending the night with Jacob because she, as far as she knows, Leah still can't bear children. So there's no danger of mm -hmm. any children, which would, she knows if Leah has more children, it will submit her closer to Jacob. So she thinks this is perfectly safe, but this give me a, it'll give me the edge. Now, who would think God would work with something like this? But see, God did. It wasn't a pattern or a standard to be set for all time. So they struck the agreement. You can, okay, I'll let you have these mandrakes, and you let me have Jacob. So here comes Jacob out of the field in the evening. Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee. With my son's mandrakes, and so he did. You know, <laughs> I've often wondered what must Jacob have thought. You hired me, you know. Yeah. I'm renting you out. Yeah. Get to rent you for the night for these mandrakes. <clears throat> so he did, mm -hmm. and uh, it says God hearkened to Leah, yeah. Yeah. which. <laughs> Leah's thinking, yeah, I gave up the mandrakes, but uh, I got the man. That's right. <laughs> Amen. I, I'm going to ask God yeah. about this. Yeah. See yeah. how she did? Now, I'm, what I'm showing you is these people thought out how to handle their circumstances. Uh -huh. That is kind of astounding when we read it. But you really face infinitely more complex situations than they did. And you can think them out in an acceptable manner. That's is proved to you in this text here. And the Lord hearkened unto Leah, and she conceived. <laughs> See, the last time we heard, she ceased bearing. All of a sudden. <laughs> now, I know Rachel didn't bank on this. And the credit couldn't be really given to the mandrakes. All right. The reason for the conception tells you. So you, God hearkened to Leah. It doesn't say the mandrakes did their job. I mean, that's not, that's not what it said. It's interesting at this time when it was very rudimentary, it's very spiritually rudimentary times, that there was an acute awareness among the sensitive people that with God all things are possible. Now, you know, this is a hard thing to convince our generation of this. If you've ever tried to convince someone of this, you, you'll find out this is very difficult for some people, some professing Christians, some professing good Christians, quote, quote. Very hard to accept that with God all things are possible. But you see back in these, prior to the Bible and prior to the law, and they picked up on this, that God can do anything. I think there needs to be a, like a revival of this this kind of thinking. There's just simply not enough of this kind of thinking yeah. in our time. God hearkened to Leah. Yeah, did more work, That's right. She said, God, give me my hire. See, so I, in other words, it, this, this action I took doesn't make sense under normal circumstances, but God made it work. Mm -hmm. yeah. God made it work. As I mentioned, of course, Rachel has no idea that this is <laughs> this is going to happen. <coughs> he did this because I gave my handmaid. I don't know what she thinks. She didn't say he did this because I got those mandrakes. Right? Yeah, right. She says be, he did this because I gave I have given my maiden to my husband. Didn't mention the mandrakes at all. In other words, I was willing. I wanted Jacob to have children so bad. Mm -hmm. I was willing to give him my handmaid. Yeah. Actually, that took some humility and yeah. 
sacrifice to do that. Now, this doesn't mean that this is a license to proceed like this. We surely, surely know all that. And then she called his name Issachar, which means recompense or hired. See, there it is. Uh, <laughs> there it is again. Well, it didn't end there. It doesn't end there. Now, remember, she was cease bearing, and here she bears. And Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. <laughs> Oh, he apparently opened up her womb. Two more sons. She already had four. Sixth son. Tenth son in total. And ten sons in total. So what'd she say? Boy, I was lucky again. Oh, boy, it's a sheer fortunate. She says, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Dowry. What's that? Well, some people got number translated got all followed up thinking about dowry. A dowry is something you give, give the person to get a bride. But it's not what it means here. Mm -hmm. Dowry is like a view of endowment. Mm -hmm. yeah. God has given me, look what I can give to Jacob. Mm -hmm. Six sons. That's half the tribe, brother. That's half the tribes. Half of them. Yeah. A despised wife, half the tribes came from her. Six out of twelve. How about that? God endured me with a good dowry. Named him Zebulun, which means habitation. This is just what I got. I got I inflated the household. Now I wanted to share with you uh, some of the words that people said when their children were born. Be interesting on Genesis. Remember, these are spiritually obtuse times when not much revelation was given. The first birth, when after it occurred, the first birth, Eve said, I, got a, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Mm -hmm. When Noah was born, his father said, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground will the Lord, which the Lord hath cursed. So these, it's like a prophecy. When Ishmael was born, there's no record of Hagar saying anything or Sarah either. When Isaac was born, Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all here will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah should have given child suck for I have borne him a son in his old age. See, that's what she said. When Reuben was born, Leah said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction for therefore my husband will love me. When Simeon is born, because the Lord hath heard me, that I was hated, he hath therefore given me a son also. When Levi was born, now this time will my husband be joined to me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his son named Levi. When Judah was born, I will praise the Lord, therefore he called, she called his name Judah, and left bearing. When Bilhah gave birth to Dan, Bilhah didn't say anything. Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice and given me a son. When Bilhah gave her birth a second son, Rachel said, with great wrestlings, if I wrestled with my sister, I've been prevailed. When Zilpah gave birth to Dan, Rachel said, a troop comes. There's more on the way. When Zilpah again conceived, Rachel said, happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. You see how they all responded mm -hmm. yeah. to these births? I've, I've got to, I've got to ask you this question, like, how do you respond to the working of the Lord? You you want to really think about this. Well, I'm not looking for an answer. I'm just saying, just spend some time and we go through your life and see how have I responded. And maybe you'll find a, a part in your life where you, boy, I didn't respond properly. Then respond now. Then respond now. Make up for it. Praise right. God for what happened. Way, maybe it happened years ago, but you just didn't. You just didn't respond appropriately. So, Amen. respond appropriately now. <laughs> then after that, Leah bore a daughter. First time a daughter is mentioned, Dinah. But she's going to be mentioned later on in Scripture. Uh, somewhere in here. Uh, I failed to read the text, but I 
I can't remember offhand. It's it's in here where it was, but it got, but the people said God built the house of Israel with Rachel and Leah. That's how the text. I got it in here. That's that's how the text reads. He built the house of Israel with Rachel and Leah. He doesn't say with Rachel and Bilhah and Leah and Zilpah. He said, "I built the house." He built the house of Israel with Rachel and Leah. Yeah, amen. Boy, I tell you that. <laughs> That's marvelous. So now we got uh, got the twelve sons. But I put the question to you again: Is this the way you thought? Is this the way you would have thought God would do it? <laughs> So why did he do it this way? That no flesh could glory in his presence. That's why he did it this way. Because you, there's no way you could account for this any way but that God did it. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah. All right, any of you have a word to say tonight? Something else? Yes. I want to go back to the issue with the mandrakes. It's kind of similar to the situation with... Jacob and Esau, which Jacob uh, Esau traded his <laughs> right, entire good. birthright just for a bowl of stew. That's good. I mean, I mean you, you can use that same reasoning that Lee used. Like Esau would be thinking, okay, there's no fear of of uh, his father Isaac confusing Jacob for Esau. I mean, there are some very stark differences between the two. So I was, should still end up being blessed anyway. I mean, That's there, good. There could be that uh, line of reasoning. Mm -hmm. But also then going back down to uh, another comment you noted, um, that Leah, being the despised wife, gave gave half the, the sons of the tribes. Yeah, it's right. And, mm -hmm. I mean that that also. I mean, through that despised wife, there was also Levi, who is the uh, the priestly tribe priesthood mm -hmm. lineage, and there was also Judah through it's, whom Jesus came through. That's right. But when you look at Rachel, then <laughs> like the, just the two, uh, just Joseph and Benjamin, it was through those two sons that the other ten were spared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> This is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot to just you you dig around in there, and it's like a field with a lot of treasures in it. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah, son. If God had not done that. There's a good chance that Leah would have been. And when I say despised, I don't mean like in a, con a condemned way, mm -hmm. but set it not, just kind of set on the yeah. sideline and not really mm -hmm. consider. But God gave her a place. Yes. He, he gave her an heritage. And man mm -hmm. wasn't able to, to disqualify her from that. Mm -hmm. he, because just because Jacob loves Rachel more didn't mean that that God couldn't give her a place in this that other people would recognize. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes people think that whatever they've got, <coughs> maybe people don't appreciate them or it's not really recognized what they're doing in the kingdom. But see, God's the one giving us mm -hmm. our heritage. Yes. Amen. God's the one that enables us to do what we're doing, and then He's the one that gives the reward. Amen. Amen. I love it the way it's spelled out. It's spelled out just that way. And the women saw it. It's another thing. The women saw it. Amen. Amen. Any others tonight? He said, I dwell with him of a humble and contrite spirit. And you see here how much this, each one of them, at some point in time, had to humble themselves and give their handmaiden. And that yeah. you can see how that probably that probably uh, squelched a lot of a lot of things that could have happened or would have happened as far as envy and all this had had that not he he, he worked within that humility of them Amen. sacrificing Amen. something Amen. and building this nation and now Christ has done the same thing he humbled himself he came down yeah. and he by himself single handedly as it were built a, the body for for God this Amen. <laughs> Amen. Brother Gibbon. Yes. These, uh, the, I haven't really seen it this way before, but the, the, the desire of these two women to have children for their husband, Leah's desire to be loved and 
Mm -hmm. yeah. Rachel's desire and then the struggle. I think it, it, it does mirror the, the human nature yeah. in mm -hmm. some very interesting way. We've already touched on, but so maybe I've stated a little differently. Um, it reminded me of that quote from that famous quote from Augustine, he said, Our hearts are ever restless to yes. find rest in thee. Mm -hmm. You see these two women are restless. They're, they have, they're restless. Yeah. They yeah. want to bear children. They want to outdo one another. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it seems to mirror the, the kind of the restlessness of the human heart. Amen. That people, people have these desires. Mm -hmm. we, we have these desires um, for recognition or mm -hmm. for love yeah. Yeah. or... Or, mm -hmm. or to feel like we're useful. That's right. Amen. Um, but what, what, at, what often happens is these these kinds of desires are they're take they're not we don't go to God for their fulfillment. Most people and all of us, I think, in the past, could say this about ourselves. We take these desires, we try to fulfill them in some other way, yeah. other than going to God. That's right. We. Mm -hmm. The affection is prostituted. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But only, but, but the desires themselves aren't necessarily wrong. No. It wasn't no. wrong for these women to want to have these children. Mm -hmm. This was right. This showed their love for their husbands. Yes. Actually, yes. Uh, so the desire, even the des even a desire like, people have a desire for recognition. Now carried to the nth degree. If it's not, if it's not done with God in mind, yeah. it can become pride. But the, mm -hmm. the root of that desire is not wrong. That's right. Amen. Because God has promised that He'll give us glory. Mm -hmm. See, but yeah. if that if that desire is not taken to God, it does become Satan fell by that's, pride. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. No, I can see that, uh, Brother Jason, that God has made man this way. But then He, he insists that man give himself to God Amen. and desire what God has for him. You can really say that anything, no matter yeah. how good it is, if it's not taken to God, becomes corrupt. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, I found I'm sorry, but I found this mm -hmm. this text that's in Ruth 411. We are witnesses, the Lord make the women the woman that has come into thine house like Rachel and like Leah, which did, which too did build the house of Israel. <laughs> and I wondered, didn't that something? Which two? Yes, Sister Barb. I was thinking about your, your comment about the saints being able to wrestle with God, like these women had a shadow of wrestling with one another. Mm. Um, was reminded about the woman that came to Jesus and was asking healing for her daughter. Oh, yes. And it seemed like Jesus was discouraging her in yes. her quest. Yes, good. And that's the time when she took up this wrestling. That's it good. It took perception. It took a great desire, very much boldness, mm -hmm. a quickness of mind to be able to yeah. reason rightly with what the Lord gave her. Yeah. And the Lord rewarded that. Mm -hmm. Amen. He gave her what she came for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did the same thing with the man that brought the epileptic boy to Jesus. He brought him to his disciples first. Yeah. And he took the case to... That's right. Yes, Brother Tony. This holy rivalry. Holy or this, rivalry. Or this, uh, like faithful competitiveness. Yeah. It increases the kingdom. Amen. And, and, and Amen. God, God put that, that, set that situation up so they would be, mm -hmm. you know... Mm -hmm. That's right. Tit for tat, you know, mm -hmm. and, and this... Uh, but it increased... Mm -hmm. Increased in them the twelve tribes mm -hmm. out got output going there, but the same thing you can mm -hmm. see it in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might say provoke one another right. to love and good right. works. Yeah. 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 there it is. Yeah. 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 Amen. <laughs> and it, and yet it's, it's not accompanied with jealousy and this mm -hmm. this type of thing. And envy. See, it's not accompanied with that. Yes, yes This really highlights what a sin apathy is. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, amen, yeah. Yeah. amen. Yeah, they didn't say, "Well, I am what I am." What's the use? And you see, you have the capability of provoking someone that's falling into lethargy, yeah. but they see you, and it. Yeah, that's true. 
Well, I got a handmade too. That's right. Yes. And I think we've said this, but everyone, their desires were to their husband. That's right. They weren't really for themselves. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like I really want a child. It was their desire was to to increase their husband, to increase That's the right. seed. Mm -hmm. So. So our desire to increase the kingdom, mm -hmm. if we uh, press in, it will be blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. We didn't mention this, but now you have to give credit to Bill Hahn Zilpa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. They they gave their yeah. see they humbly gave their right. children to their mistress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was going to mention. Yeah. Uh, and we have the contrast there to Hagar, mm -hmm. who despised <clears throat> Sarah yeah. mm -hmm. because she saw that that Sarah was barren. She was heir to her mistress. Oh, Proverbs yes. talks about that. That uh, it, it, mm -hmm. it presented a great deal of contention. She set herself above Sarah, so to yes. speak, mm -hmm. yeah. and would have taken Sarah's place. That's good. Mm -hmm. But even though, uh, I mean, none of the credit goes to the handmaidens. Mm -hmm. None of it. Like you read, mm -hmm. Leah and Rachel that builded the house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a good they And their handmaidens. It's like they're not mentioned again. They did the work. They mm -hmm. were, they were subservient to the will of their mistresses, mm -hmm. and yet, then there's left off mentioning of them. Now that happened hundreds of years, it, with the it, at the time of Ruth when they made that statement. But look how they had handled this. There still wasn't a, wasn't a, a lot known by God. But they, that's how they reasoned on that text. He built the house of Israel Amen. by both mm -hmm. Leah and Rachel. Amen. So that's what we've done. That's what we just went through: the building of the house. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> so they were partakers with Rachel. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. They weren't named, mm -hmm. but they're partakers in their heritage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the house of Israel. Yeah. Jacob was uh, the, the only male. Only man mentioned here, and yet how God used all He hit, He hit, used the four women. Yeah, they, they were they were, the, and yet they were accredited as to the house of, as the house of, house of Israel. Yeah. <laughs> same we, same thing happens in the body. Yeah. I mean, like um, the whole body works together mm -hmm. to do something, but maybe everybody's not named. Yeah. Right. So all yeah. credit all goes to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. I like this vicariousness. Amen. You mentioned this. Yeah. We're introduced to this having children vicariously. Isn't that you know, a thought, though? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. You know, Jesus, in the end, he, everybody that's, everyone that's saved and is presented to God will have come through Christ. Amen. That's right. Amen. But it never says they're begotten by Christ or yeah. born of Christ. Right. They're begotten of God right. and born of God. Amen. Yeah. 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 Very care, he's very careful Amen. about how he says this. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's good. All right, we'll have a word of prayer. <clears throat> Our Heavenly Father, we're, we're grateful for this text. We're grateful for these women of old. What wonderful lessons they give us on humility and creativity and diligence. We're thankful you put these records in the scripture. They assist us in understanding yourself, and we see a lot of ourself in them too. So we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>